Hey Gender Queer Chat, Joe here and um, Eli. Eli's come to say hello. He's come to the party, although he's probably going to drive me nuts because like, this is where I usually give him his treats. So I will introduce you to the party right away. Oh, in case you don't know, Gender Queer Chat is four years old this week or this month, so we're doing um, a, an anniversary celebration, a birthday party, um, and we were supposed to bring our favorite party foods and I loved everybody's video this week so far. And um, Matt and I were discussing in the comments of Matt's video uh, about Canadian food because his was very distinctly Australian with his hundreds and thousands um, which we call sprinkles here in Canada on white bread which I just thought was hilarious it was awesome I loved it and uh, he had said he wanted to there's like five Canadian foods he was going to um, enjoy I was gonna do poutine but here's the thing I'm really sick oh I'm really yammering I'm sorry I'm gonna calm down focus poutine is french fries cheese curds and gravy and it's kind of sounds disgusting but it's truly delicious and uh, ridiculously caloric and you can get it at Harvey's, KFC, I think McDonald's had poutine for a while in Canada. Every fast food outlet has poutine. It's, it's like fries and gravy with the added joy of curds. Unfortunately I'm really sick and I have no appetite so I didn't buy poutine. I also did not buy Timbits which I was going to buy. You like get out of the food. <clears throat> um, because Thankfully, Ricky bought a Tim Hortons donut, and I hate Tim Hortons. There's one thing we truly disagree on, Ricky. Tim Hortons and me, we do not get along. Cannot stand their coffee, cannot stand their tea, cannot stand their donuts. So, I did not get those, but I got Matt every other thing he asked for. So, dill pickle chips. Let's crack, let's crack into these bad boys. They look uh, like normal chips. They smell very pickly. Mm hmm Oh, they are good. I don't buy them very often. <gasps> don't sneeze in. Matt, you didn't ask for this. But ketchup chips is a big thing in Canada, and I think they don't, I don't know if they don't have it. I know they don't have it in the States, but they, uh, they may have it around the world. Ketchup chips are one of my favorites. They're very chemically tasting. Maybe that pickle tastes pretty chemically. Ketchup chips look like this. They're covered in red powdery substance. <laughs> you gotta know I live alone. Right? Like this is nuts. Now I have two humongous party bags of chips open on the floor, waiting for. Okay, it gets better. <clears throat> These are Eli butter tarts, which is a Canadian specialty. Eli, go blow. Um, I think it's just like brown sugar. I'm not 100 percent sure. They're like brown sugar tarts of some sort. And I don't 100% like them. My dad likes them, so I'm going to be giving these to my dad. But I will try one. They're a Canadian thing. It's a thing. This is the better thing. These are Nanaimo bars. And I didn't know, really, that they were that Canadian, except that Nanaimo BC is a place. And these are freaking decadent. They're like a, sh a layer of sugar on a layer of sugar on a layer of sugar. The top layer is chocolate. Then the middle layer is kind of like a custard, a vanilla custard, and then the bottom layer is chocolatey coconut. Yeah. And I love Nanamo bars. Okay. Now I'm done. Oh, and because I'm such a class act, I'm going to chug it down with Diet Coke because this is my idea of a party. Poppin' chips and Diet Coke and Nanamo bars. Straight out of the two liter bottle because I live alone and this is how this is how I roll. Okay, <clears throat> party out of the way. I really enjoyed that. I'm glad that we did that this week. <coughs> Even though I'm so sick and I have no appetite. And the Nanaimo bar was good. This week's topic was what does gender queer chat mean to you? And um, as you probably know, and I can't even believe this is true, October, which is a few weeks away. It's my second anniversary on the channel, so I've been here for half of the time, and I can't even believe that. I can't believe I'm the longest standing member on this channel. And um, when I first joined the channel, um, I had actually been watching pretty extensively and exclusively a, ch a channel called uh, Tranny Star Galactica. And um, I loved the, th the concept of a collab channel, and I loved... Um, I was really interested in transgender issues, and I was, I was watching a lot of transgender videos at the time. But it wasn't until somebody named Freshly Charles used the word genderqueer in their video that I started to Google the word genderqueer. And then I landed on genderqueer chat. And I hadn't actually been watching it that long when I got accepted to be on the channel. And I felt, I think they had asked 
in their auditions to you had to explain why you were different than everybody else on the channel. And I think I really stood out because I was so much older and so much, um, I, I just very different than a lot of people on this channel. I, although I guess now when you look at the, the spectrum, it, it is a wide variety of us. At the time, um, there was Stefan and Jan and Kanan. Kanan was new. Same with Kanan, Callie and I all started at the same time. But there were a bunch of young F. TMs or people who were sort of on that in the FTM world which by the way we saw somebody left a comment I think on Ricky's video and we will touch on that topic that FTM versus gender queer subject because it's a big one but a lot of the people on the channel were very very young kind of hip FTM types and I'm not and it was kind of I think I offered a different voice I really did think that I, I offered a different voice as someone um, who doesn't mind so much looking as gendered as I do, but feeling the way I feel. I, I know I, I, you know, what's going on in my head is, is doesn't need to be reflected in the way I look for me to feel good about myself. You know, I don't mind that I have long hair. It doesn't bother me. I don't mind that. <clears throat> well, and I'm not crazy about my boobs, but I haven't done anything about them. So it just goes to show I, you know, you live, I can live it with them. It's not the end of the world. So, you know, I was, I was I really did stand apart and I really wanted I really wanted to be part of the channel for that reason. The same week I joined, Callie was also also joined and I loved Callie. I miss Callie a lot. I hope Callie watches, but I don't I don't think they do. Um Yeah, there was somebody else. Jess was somebody on the channel who really kind of stood apart for me, really um captured my attention. And then Chris, who was um on at the same time I was, who was actually sort of close to my age and I got to meet Chris when I went to Portland, Oregon. So <clears throat> there was a kind of a wide variety. Over the years, I cannot believe how many people have come and gone over the years. It blows my mind. I love everybody on the channel now. Like it is weird how it, and Ricky said this yesterday, that it's kind of like a conversation. A lot of our videos refer to the other videos of the week. And I'm always referring to Rick, Ricky's videos because I find I have a lot in common with Ricky's opinions. I, I really agree more often than not. And on the times that I don't, like I eat Tim Hortons. <laughs> Um, you know, it creates dialogue and I love it. I love it. Um, I love Zane Laura Gabriel's addition to this channel. I mean, you've got this like whole other continent and this whole other way of thinking and love Zane Laura very, very much. Um, I, you know, I could go on everybody. I love everybody. Matt always has something fascinating and, a, and, a, and a great to say. We've got new people. We've got Quincy. We've got, um, Jack is gone, I believe. Um, we have some new, there was another new person recently. Christina came and went, loved Christina. Different point of view, same as me. Didn't mind so much being called she, didn't mind so much the girl thing. But it was a sense of community and a sense of um, really feeling like I could participate in something and, f and belong. It's a sense of belonging that really just cannot be matched in life. Um, how much time have I got here? Oh, you know me, I'm rambling. It's already up to eight minutes. I think I'm going to be the longest video this week, but I do want to tell a quick story. Today at work, something awesome happened. I went, um, we have a French immersion school that's new and there's all kinds of complicated, um, computer problems at that school. So I've been at that school a lot lately. I fixed the computers at that building. And I was in this teacher's room doing something on his computer and the kids were about to come in and he goes, oh, when I introduce you, he goes, the kids are about to come in. Um, are you Madame or Mademoiselle, which in French is Miss or Mrs. And I got really flustered and I said, neither. And he goes, what? And I said, just tell them to call me Joe. And he goes, well, I can't really do that. And I said, well, I prefer Mr. I said, you know what? I'll just leave before they come in. That's fine. And I kind of dodged out. Anyway, as uh, later in the day, I was back in his room at lunch hour and he was so sweet. He was a really nice guy. And he said to me, can I ask you something? He goes, you don't have to answer. I'm just curious. And he said, he said, what is the deal with, why don't you like Mr. or Miss? And so the, the conversation opened up and uh, much like last week's video, 101, I, although I kind of had some snappier answers this time. Um, and it was such a, an open question and he had such an open face. He was definitely interested in the answer. He wasn't at all, you know, um, transphobic or homophobic or anything like that. And he said, so I, I started it. I said, well, I guess, have you heard of gender identity disorder or, and he, he, he goes, oh yeah, yeah. And I said, well, I don't have that. I said, but on the spectrum of, you know, the gender binary, how did I phrase it? I said, I'm not transgendered, but I'm somewhere in that neighborhood. I said, I really, really do not identify as female. I do not like using female pronouns. And in, the problem is in French, French is a very gendered language and they always use uh, 
every word has a female or a male pronoun, you know, like nouns do, never mind people. So um, the conversation just went on and he was talking about his tw a twin boy and girl and he was talking about how he really wants them to grow up to be whoever they are destined to be. And um, he was really open-minded and it was a, such a nice conversation. And he was really, really accepting. And I felt like a million bucks walking out of that room. So there you go. That's gender queer chat at work because I would not be the person I am today if not for this channel. And having been given the vocabulary and having, having been given the strength of character to feel very good in my skin. I also was telling him a story about how um, in my younger years I had a, a, a few really like conventionally good-looking boyfriends, um, both of which resulted in girls saying, what's a guy like that doing with a girl like Joe, right? Because I'm conventionally not very pretty. And so um, she, I was saying, you know, these guys who are attracted to me, regardless of what they look like, in some cases they were bisexual or um, I'm sure on the gray area of the spectrum themselves because they're attracted to a person like me. And I'm sure they're attracted to some masculine part of me. Do you know what I mean? They, if they were interested in a feminine girl, they would be with a feminine girl, but they weren't. They were interested in me. And so that's their sexual preference. And, you know, like it's that intersection. Here's their sexual preference and here's my gender identity. And, and where the intersection was, was the match, right? And um, similarly, I'm attracted to a specific type of guy. Um, the, I would say probably the vast majority of that type of guy is not attracted back to me, but that's okay. I'm very comfortable in my skin. I was telling the teacher, Peter, this all this today, and I was saying, telling him about these ex-boyfriends I had and, and how it's, you know, I was very blessed to have um, a mother who loved me unconditionally and a couple of boyfriends who loved me unconditionally. And as a result, I think I became very comfortable in my own skin. I'm really, I'm not unhappy with the package, the way some trans folks are, or the way some genderqueer people are about their bodies. I am a little bit out of touch with my body. There are many times I wish it, I had a flat chest. There are many times I wish um, things were slightly different, but they're not, and I'm pretty okay with reality. It is what it is, and I've, I've acclimatized quite well to, you know, the boobs and so forth. Okay, we're going on to what, like 13 minutes. Okay, so party time. Um, gonna chow down on that one. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm. I hope you get to try new Nymo bars at some point in your life. Cha-cha.